Well, this might be a little bit of an unusual topic for Parenting Pulse this week, but considering we had a big rally in Burlington this past weekend, and we've seen rallies all over in support of Ukraine and the people of Ukraine, what you may not realize is that your kids are seeing a whole bunch of videos on TikTok and on social media. And if they bring it up to you, or even if they don't, uh, you should probably be talking to your kids about this. So how do we talk to kids? Personally, I don't know, but I turn to an expert. She's a parenting blogger. I will call her an expert, founder of Mabel's <laughs> Labels. Julie Cole is here. Julie, this is a great topic that you've brought to our attention today. Yeah, well, you know, it's just so, it's so relevant right now. And I think parents always struggle with how do we communicate with our kids about hard things? And I don't know, like, for me, I remember very, very distinctly as a child, I was that age where we were very afraid of a nuclear war in World War III. Like we lived, I remember P, the PA came on when I was in grade two and the principal was announcing some sad news, somebody had died, but I was sure in that moment he was announcing that we were in, in, in nuclear war. So, I mean, it just weighed so heavily on our minds. And I think, you know, for our kids, we want to make sure we're communicating in an age appropriate way so that they're not freaking out and they're not scared. And I, and I really think that for the little guys, like for the little ones, I don't think you really want to be having much conversation. I was checking in with my friend who's a parenting psychotherapist, Allison Schaefer, and she says, really, for the little guys, just um, protect them. Don't listen to the news in the car. Turn the channel if, if something comes up, up on the TV because they just can't process the information. And some of the visuals, like, you know, people crying and, and tanks and, you know, some of the things that they see will, will cause them a lot of stress. And it's just too much for them to manage. If they do come across it, then, you know, you just remind them that this was something that's happening very far away. And it's funny because I remember my mom doing this when I was, when I'd hear a news story and I would be so scared, like a child went missing or something. And I'd say, mom, where was that? And she always said, somewhere in the States. And that somehow made me feel so much better. It just seemed like it was far away. So just remind them that, you know, you're the parent and you will keep them safe. And if there's something that they need to be made aware of, you'll let them know, but that they don't need to worry about this. But to your point, for the bigger kids, you know, they're on TikTok, they're on social media. And I know my teens, they know more about this than I do. Like mm -hmm. some of these kids are pretty woke, right? Really political. Um, so, I mean, I think it's always good to do a little check-in, find out how much do you know? What are you hearing? And then, and then you do want to do that little check-in because if they've had misinformation, um, you want to be able to straighten it out. So we also have to be kind of have a finger on the pulse of what's going on in the world too, so that we can have these conversations, conversations with our kids, right? Yeah, no doubt. Now, it is a little different this time around as compared to when you and I were growing up, though, because that might have been family time with the TV or reading it in a newspaper. But uh, I mean, you yourself have six children, some in the age group that are using social media. I know there's something to be talking about it. Is there any consideration to somehow limiting social media or is that even a possibility at this point? Yeah, because you don't know where they're consuming their information. It's everywhere and they've all got their gadgets. I think you have to really, it, 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 it's kind of, a, it depends. It depends on your kid. So if you have a child who's highly sensitive to these things, um, th that can be really problematic. And you might want to try and limit, especially the tweens. Um, mm. So sort of that eight to 12, you know, you can do a lot of parental controls with that age when it comes to tech. As the kids get a little older, it's very hard to monitor and police. So really that's where you want to just be doing the check-ins with them to make sure they're getting the right information. So what now, you know, we just had the rally here in Burlington and you did see kids out at the rally with their families. What are your thoughts on, you know, bringing your, your child into this and taking them to a place of support like that? Should, is, is that a good thing? Is it only if they're interested or how do you navigate that situation? I love it. I think it's a wonderful thing because I think, um, you know, another thing that Allison Schaefer talks about is when kids are, when there's something going on in the world, they feel helpless, they feel powerless. Um, so you can do little things with them to make them feel less helpless that they're contributing. So for the little guys, it can be, 
you know, picking some sunflowers, which is the, the national flower of Ukraine and putting them in your house and reminding them that you're thinking about the people of the Ukraine or whether it's um, with the bigger kids. Yeah, it's going to going to a rally or going to a protest. I love engaging my kids in that sort of thing. Um, it's educational. It's great role modeling about how to be a, a, a responsible member of the community and again it makes them feel less less like they have no power um so i think all these things are important you can even put like you know a peace flag or the ukraine flag somewhere little gestures are are important for for kids as well julie as always appreciate the advice have a great women's day tomorrow i'm sure it'll be very busy for you and we'll talk to you in a couple weeks thanks jason